Uh, good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday morning. Let's do some martial arts. Uh, maybe Lepar style. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That should be enough. All right. Let me take five minutes, please. <coughs> All right. <sighs>
Okay, good morning, everybody. I forgot to do some martial art form. Like, uh, so you have leopard style, right? Like, do it like bull style, like this, right? Or, like, uh, you know, just cat stance. <laughs> good, good. All right. So, last night I did not do any, uh, Human House episode last night. Last night I read a book. Well, I'm still reading it. It's about Kennedys. I found it very fascinating book to read. It's like basically biography of Kennedy family. You know, John F. Kennedy, the former president. It's about history of not just Kennedy family, but also uh, history of uh, America. Like. 1900s, basically, 1960s uh, and before. Okay, so, uh, I think the way, I mean, the point I am at in reading that book is, uh, I've read about uh, one six, right? It's quite a thick book, right? And I bought it in the supermarket yesterday. Okay, because I was I was very poor. So yesterday, in the morning, we did one episode, right? Saturday, and then I took a nap and woke up, and um, uh, I thought about going to Walmart to shop, but I went to another place, uh, more expensive, <laughs> more upscale supermarket, and they had this book about. Kennedy family, and I started reading it because I did not want to drink yes, last night. That's why I skipped this episode because if I come here, I drink, right? And I felt, oh, I, I have too much alcohol in my system. So uh, when that happens, I just read books instead. So that's what I did last night. And it was quite a page tunnel, okay? And then there was a, like late at night, like about midnight. And then I stopped reading after a couple of hours and fell asleep. And yeah, that was that. Yeah, I'm still reading that book. <clears throat> Very interesting. Yeah. Maybe I'll tell you about that book so far, what I've read. Uh, Kennedy Family. Uh, Kennedy's, Jeff Kennedy's, uh, John Jack Fitzgerald Kennedy, he, his, uh, great-grandfather came to America from Ireland back in between, uh, 19, I mean, 1830 and 1860. There was a huge influx of, uh, German and Irish Catholics. And JFK's great-grandfather, father side, so Kennedy, he was one of them. He was Irish Catholic. And from what I've read in this book, uh, Ir Irish Catholics came to America to, I'm sure many different Irish Catholics came to America for different reasons. But one of the ma main reasons was potato famine in 1800s. What is potato famine in? Ireland, uh, this crops of potatoes start to die from some kind of diseases. It's kind of pandemic situation that affects potato plants. Okay, there's potato famine. I read about it like uh, several months ago. Then I read into it again in this biographical sketch uh, book about Kennedy family. So that was kind of interesting. So, during potato famine, the Irish couple came to America and they got married. So that's great grandfather of JF Kennedy, okay, back in 1800s. So that's how it started. And they were poor and the JF Kennedy, his great grandfather, father side, he, they came and uh, he was a barrel maker, wooden barrel. Uh, 
the professor is called Cooper, C-O-O-P-E-R. Yeah, there are a lot of old English vocabulary is used in that, that book, so I have to look up, okay, in the cell phone. Cooper, uh, the maker of barrel, wooden barrels, right? Yeah. Wooden kegs, right? Yeah. But initially they were poor. They are poor immigrants from Ireland, Irish Catholics, okay? And yes, there was discrimination against Irish Catholics, okay? But they overcame, and... But his... That gentleman, the first Kennedy, JFK's great-grandfather, he died quite early. But his wife carried on the business, and her first business something like a shop to sell uh, fabrics, like seamstress, like needles, thread, that kind of stuff. Uh, and then she expanded business to sell whiskey. So she was a very good businesswoman, okay? JFK's great-grandmother, widow. Okay, and, but she was successful in her business, and she raised her children, and gave birth to JFK's grandfather. Okay, he was also a successful businessman. Okay, and then JFK's grandfather gave birth to. Well, I mean, he and his his wife gave birth to. Uh, JFK's father, that's Joe, Joseph, Patrick, Kennedy. And he was even more successful as a businessman. Okay. And I don't remember all the names, but uh, JFK's grandfather, his name was Patrick Joseph Kennedy. Okay. And JFK's father, just swapping the middle and first name, uh, Joseph Patrick Kennedy, okay, and then Joe, Joe Kennedy, okay, and one of his, so he had four sons, Joe Kennedy, JFK's father, he had four sons, four son, <coughs> Joe Kennedy, Joseph Kennedy Jr., second son, John, Jack, John Jack, Jack is his nickname, okay, so John Fitzgerald Kennedy, okay, <laughs> His third son, uh, Bobby Kennedy, the future Attorney General of the United States. Okay. Fourth son, Ted Kennedy. I think Ted Kennedy is still alive, right? Is, is he still a politician? I don't know. Maybe he's retired, but uh, and he's the only surviving son of Joe Kennedy. Okay. Uh, his fourth three sons died. Okay. And Joe Kennedy also had daughters. And how many daughters? Maybe four, something like that, okay. One daughter got dis permanently dis disabled because of lobotomy. That's very bad brain surgery, okay. Lobotomy nowadays is probably illegal, okay. Uh, because it, it's just very bad. Sort of technique that used to be done back in early, well, mid mid 1900s. Okay, so probably now this is illegal. Okay, so uh, one of JF Kennedy's sister got permanently disabled because she went through this lobotomy brain surgery. Uh, because she was suffering from some kind of mental illness. Okay, um, some brain damage. So they should suffer during her birth, okay? <laughs> and um, another daughter, daughter of Ke uh, Joe Kennedy, JFK's father, okay? Uh, she died in a plane crash, okay? And so they, they call it like Kennedy's curse, curse in Kennedy, just too many children died, JFK's son, Died from plane crash too, right? 
and JFK himself, he died by assassination. Bobby Kennedy died from assassination. Okay. Uh, a lot of death in that family. Okay. So, this is Kennedy curse. And, so we'll, we'll talk about it, okay? What's the causation of this death? Is it cause some kind of superstitious? No, well, we can rationally analyze what it is, okay? My opinion, uh, I think they've been reckless, okay? JFK, for example, one theory is that uh, when he was in Dallas, was, what year, something, nine, 1963 or something, when he was the president of the United States, he went to Dallas, Texas, and one th theory is that uh, Secret Service agents, they uh, recommended when he was doing the motorcade uh, the, to greet the crowd in the Dallas, Texas, they recommended bulletproof cover of the car, but JFK refused. He wanted to show the Dallas crowd his own person, face and body. He was riding a car, right? But he was a comfortable car without a top roof or anything. And Secret Service agents, they were concerned and they did warn him, but he didn't listen. He was reckless. Okay. And his elder brother, he was second son, eldest son, okay. His elder brother, uh, Joe Kennedy Jr., she was a, he was a Navy pilot during World War II. Okay. He was stationed in Britain and he worried, his mission was to go to France to drop some air bomb. He was pilot of air bomb, bomber and uh, his job was to uh, drop some bombs in France, in parts that's occupied by Nazi Germany, some storage of Nazi weapons, okay? <laughs> but airplane mechanics warned him this airplane is not safe to fly, but he volunteered, he was not ordered, but he volunteered to fly this airplane anyway. And that airplane exploded mid-air. That's how he died. That was reckless. So that overconfidence, okay, that came from this upbringing of this Kennedy family. Joe Kennedy was a highly successful businessman, okay, many times very unethical, okay. I'll tell you some more, okay, so. It's kind of brand brand dumping session a little bit, okay. So, uh, but it was a fascinating story. Let's take five minutes break, please, and then I'll tell you some more about this Kennedy family, okay? So, yeah, very interesting. Okay, let's take five minutes, please.
Oh. So, uh, good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday morning. And uh, yeah, we're talking about Kennedy story, American history in related era. Uh, we're talking about 1900s, basically. Okay. And uh, so, uh, so JFK's father, Joe Kennedy, he senior. He uh, had a thousand four daughters, and one daughter, her name was Kathleen. Okay, and she died in an airplane crash. Okay, how in Europe? She and her boyfriend in Europe, and he was married. Okay, but Kathleen Kennedy, she. Uh, got romantically involved with a married man and the married man decided to divorce his wife and decided to marry uh Catherine Kennedy. Okay. And they were about to go to in Europe from one place to another Europe place. I don't know what country from but the destination was France. Cannes. Cannes, okay, like Cannes Film Festival, that place, I guess. And people warned the couple it's too stormy, weather is too bad, too dangerous to fly. They didn't listen. 
So they flew anyway, and they died in an airplane crash. Recklessness, okay. I think the causation also Jeff Kennedy's son. He also died from an airplane crash with his. He was flying with his girlfriend. They both died in an airplane crash, right? They kind of. I think the causation of frequent death in Kennedy family come from arrogance, pride, recklessness. They are so proud and they're so arrogant that uh, they feel they are like high and mighty and they think nothing can touch them. They, be, they are special. So I think that's the causation of their frequent death in Kennedy family. They are just too reckless, arrogant, proud. Okay. I think that's, that's the cause. They are not cautious or humble. They are just too proud. They thought they were special, they are the Kennedys, so nothing bad can happen to them. And I think that's the causation. Okay. How about Bobby Kennedy? Uh, I, I haven't got that far, but from what I learned from other sources, is that Bobby Kennedy, he tried to tackle on the mafias. She's great as an attorney general. And he got assassinated by Mafia. That's one theory. Okay. I it's it's a good thing that he went after Mafia. Okay, but there's some recklessness there too. Okay. But he had a good intention. He wanted to get rid of Mafia, going after them. Well, that that's my understanding. I I might be wrong. Okay, but let me flush out my eye. You know, tell it. Okay, so what kind of unethical thing that Joe Kennedy Sr. did? Uh, something really horrible. Um, back in the days, there was used to be like Pantage theaters, right? Uh, I think Mr. Pantage have been to Alaska actually. Okay, that's my recollection because during early 1900s. Uh, Alaska gold mine was big, so there are some Hollywood people, including the Grumman's Chinese Theater, that Mr. Grumman and Mr. Pantage, I think they were in Alaska because all, there were a lot of money in Alaska back then, early 1900s. You know, the Alaska was the hub for gold miners to go to Canada, Klondike. That's like about 30 miles east of Alaska, Canada and border, Klondike, okay, big gold mine, right? And later on, American miners, also European miners, they discovered gold in Alaska too. Alaska is a lot of gold, okay. Pebble mine too, okay, so, well, that's late, late dis later discovery, but I think Pale Miners discovered it in like uh, 1980s, I think. Okay. Anyways, so early 1900s, there are a lot of investment, a lot of money to be made in gold mining. Okay, so uh, a lot of Hollywood entertainers or entertainment, uh, entertainment business entrepreneur, they, they came to Alaska, okay, to make money, to entertain the gold miners. Okay. And uh, Mr. Grumman, Mr. Pantages, I think there are some of those people. Entertainment business, okay? So, Mr. Joe, uh, Joseph Kennedy Ju Sr., the JFK's father, he, uh, he was a highly successful businessman, okay? And he went to politics too, and uh, 
Later on, he became uh, the on the FDR administration. He became the chairman of uh, no, not on that SEC. What is SEC? This is a security exchange commission, right? Something like that, right? So he was head of that, appointed by FDR. Okay? Before then, he was de he dabbled with the uh, banking industry. We're talking about Joe, JFK's father, Joe Senior, Joe Kennedy Senior. Okay, <laughs> he, he was in banking business. Some business laws later on he recovered. Okay. And uh, later on, he invested in Hollywood entertainment business. He created a company that later became RKO. So what is R RKO? It's a big, some radio caves organization, whatever, I forgot the name. It, it's back in the day, uh, it's a very big film company. Like today's 20th Century Fox. It was that, that big, okay, I, I can, uh, they produced this movie, Citizen Kane, right? Yeah, among others. Yeah. Then he made a lot of money in Hollywood as a banker, among other business venues that he pursued. He, he was very wealthy man, okay, JFK's father. Highly successful businessman. And when he was doing the Hollywood business, entertainment business, he wanted to buy Mr. Pantage's Pantage Zero, the franchise. But Mr. Pantage said no. So, according to one theory, uh, Joe Kennedy Sr. came up with this plot to frame him. So, one theory is such that he hired 17 year old underage female. And he paid that 17 year old lady to accuse Mr. Pantages uh, that he raped her. So Mr. Pantages went to trial. But it was a frame, frame, it was made up. Okay, and that lady who lied to the police, who lied to the trial court, uh, she later on confessed to her family members that uh, Joe Kennedy Sr. paid her to do that lie, that framing. Because after that, Mr. Pantage's reputation tanked, went down, and he sold his theaters to Joe Kennedy, you know, a lot cheaper price. Okay. So that's. Yeah, it's like JFK's grandfather taught them win no matter what. So it's very amoral, unethical, kind of like Machiavellian deception, deceptive technique. Kind of reminds me of Mr. Trump and his father. Okay. Mr. Trump's father, uh, I don't remember his name. Maybe it was Frank. I don't know. He wasn't that unethical, but Mr. President Trump, he was not that unethical either, but I, I did read multiple of his biographies, okay? I don't think Mr. Trump was that in that level of unethical, immoral, when it comes to business dealings, okay? I don't think so. But Joe Kennedy Sr., was like the he was unethical in many many points and also he joe kennedy and also jfk they were philanderers womanizers okay and they and so was mr trump okay So, Mr. Joe Kennedy Sr., he got involved, romantically involved after he was married. He got romantically involved with a married woman. 
and her name is Gloria Swanson. Fam very famous Hollywood actress, okay. And I was surprised to learn that Miss Gloria Swanson, I actually watched the whole movie. There was Billy Wilder's Sunset Bluebird. I love that movie and I really liked her performance. There was a movie that she made with Billy Wilder, the famous Hollywood director, uh, when she was uh, aged, probably in her 60s. Okay. Amazing actress. Okay. Great performance. Okay. I, I love that movie, Billy Wilder. And so, yeah. Yeah. It's in the book. So. And another very surprising facts I learned is this, okay? I was very disappointed at JFK. I thought he was a very strong man, but maybe he was, okay? But he got into politics because his father wanted him to. <laughs> Initially, JFK wanted to be a journalist. JFK also was a Navy, not a pilot, but Navy uh, skipper, captain. Of the sh of a ship in during the World War Two, okay. When he was in Philippines uh, as a captain of a ship, torpedo patrol ship, okay. His ship got rammed by a Japanese ship and it, it was sinking. Okay, so he rescued his crews. He went to the island, swam, made made ship boat, and then. Went to nearest island and but it, there was no food, so he and his body swam to like three miles, three or five miles to another island and to rescue his crews. So he's, he's a Navy, Navy war hero, okay. And Mr. Joe, but after the Navy, uh, JFK wanted to be a journalist. He went to Harvard, though. Yeah, he went to Harvard, graduated, whatever. Yeah, all the Kennedy guys, they went to Harvard, they graduated, right? So, uh, very elit elitist family. And, but JFK wanted to be a journalist, but his father's ambition to his sons is to be president of the United States. And that's what Joe Kennedy Sr. wanted from Joe Kennedy Jr. But Joe Kennedy Jr. Uh, passed away during World War Two as a Navy pilot. He's a war hero too. Okay. And now that his firstborn child son passed away, now because Joe Kennedy Sr. didn't think much of his second son, JFK. Okay. Now uh, he is pressuring his second son, surviving son, to get into politics and to be United States president. And JFK did not make much money at all. It's all his father financing his campaign. But his father got all the money though. Not just money though, influence. People networking, okay? Joe Kennedy Sr. knew befriended a lot of media people to write and also bribe them, give them money, to write positive things about his son, JFK. Uh, he started as congressman for to represent Massachusetts, later senator of Massachusetts. And then he was running for election for, to be president of the United States. 
all this campaign financing and positive media reviews, it that's Joe Kennedy Sr.'s design and his money. Okay. And JFK went into politics because that's what his father wanted. And if he does what his fathers want him to do, he get money from his father. He was more like an employee of his father. He just obeyed. JFK did not really want to be the president of the United States. And that to me was very disappointing because I thought Joe, JFK was a strong man, but it seems he's not a very strong man as I thought he was. He obeyed his father. I wish it's not necessarily a bad thing. It, it, you know, he became president, right? But that's thanks to his father, though. His father's money and his father's strategy. Yeah, pay the media so that media advertise for his son. Positive review and journalistic bribery. Okay, that's what to Kennedy. To senior did for his son to be first congressman, then senator, then president of the United States. It's, it's all his father, okay? Yeah. JFK was not a brilliant student either, okay? He went to top high school uh, thanks to his father because JFK was not a top student. In school. I know Bill Clinton was, but JK was he wasn't. I don't think Bill Clinton had this kind of very wealthy parents like JFK did. Bill Clinton, he is more like self-made man. Okay. And so was Abraham Lincoln. But JFK went to top high school, boarding school. <laughs> Kuwait High School, something like that, okay, and then <clears throat> he went to Harvard and by and large thanks to his father's money, this academic bribery. Okay. Uh, Joe Kennedy Sr. himself was not a very good student, but he went to Harvard uh, probably because of his father's money. Okay, JFK's grandfather's money. Okay, so academic bribery. Okay. I guess it was not illegal back then. Okay. Maybe it's, it's still going on. I don't know. I don't know. Because some people suspect that uh, George W. Bush Jr. Okay, I think it's my man, but maybe that he was not academically brilliant. Uh, some people speculate that uh, George W. Bush, George H. W. Bush Sr. Uh, bribed Yale and Harvard so that his son, George W. Bush Jr. would get in. I don't know. Like, there's some theory about that. Okay. Uh, but B when it comes to Bill Clinton, yeah, I think he went to Yale. Law school, I guess because he's a very smart guy, okay, so I, I mean, he's a Rose Scholarship, Rose Scholar, Bill Clinton, okay, uh, I think, <sighs> hello, Mr. Trump, uh, he never went to graduate school, but he just graduated from Pennsylvania, UPenn. Uh, he transferred from Fordham University to University of Pennsylvania. Uh, and uh, there's some theory that he paid his friend to take SAT for him. I think that is correct. Why? Because Mr. Trump, he's not academically brilliant person. Okay.
Mr. Trump, he got some smarts, okay, but academically speaking, he's not very academically well. Uh, he's not academically advanced kind of person, okay. So. He's more like a people person, right? Yeah. Uh, which is great for to be a businessman, right? By and large, he was successful as a businessman, okay? I think so. Yeah. Let's take five minutes break, okay? And then we talk some more about Kennedy family. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> oh. Uh, so Jacqueline Kennedy, how did they meet? Well, from what I have learned previously, JFK put in the newspaper some advertisement. Uh, yeah, I'm U.S. senator. I'm looking for a wife in a newspaper, and Jacqueline Kennedy applied to be this Kennedy wife. That's what I learned way back, and but not according to this biography. In this biography, I think it's more accurate, okay? That's how, not how they met, not some newspaper advertisement now. JFK, John F. Kennedy, he does not need newspaper advertisement to get a wife, no. He was ladies, man. He was hugely popular. Handsome guy, ha handsome guy, yeah, very handsome, charming. U.S. Senator, he got a lot of women around him, okay, so. So, I think what happened, uh, according to this biography, is that uh, JFK, she was a, more like a journalist. She, she worked in a company, newspaper company, Washington Times-Herald, back then, okay. Uh, he worked there, she worked there. Catherine Kennedy used to work there, and also uh, a lady from uh, Denmark, okay. So Kennedy, they used to date this lady from Denmark, okay. And then they broke up because, to me, Kef Kennedy family, they are like Christians in name only. Sino, Sano. Okay. 
you know, they're not your, if they say they're Irish Catholics, but they're not Christians. They're Christians in name only. What they do, they don't practice Christian at all. Okay. They're not Christian practitioners. It's Christians in name only, just like Mr. Trump. Right. And his family. <laughs> Christians in name only. Okay, so. Yeah. They don't practice Christianity whatsoever. Okay. They may attend churches on Sundays, possibly, most likely, for political reasons, but that's not Christianity at all. Okay, so they're, they're Christians in name only, in my opinion. Okay. Okay. I don't go to churches, but I do practice Christianity. Okay. So what's the opposite of Christians in name only? How about Christians in substance, not in form? Christians in form, Christians in name only, Sino, that's more like uh, people who attend churches, but they don't really practice Christianity, like President Trump, President Kennedy, their families, okay? And a lot of politicians are like that, okay? They go, they say they are Christians for political purpose to get Christian votes, okay? To name a few, okay? So, but I don't attend churches. I used to, okay? But I kind of see myself as graduating from Christian churches, okay? I graduated. Okay? Another thing, the way I see Christian churches, they're great institutions, okay? Uh, but I go there when I'm sick or when my friends are sick to pray for them, to ask them for their prayer. Or for election, yeah, I go to churches uh, to pray for my election. Okay. To me, Christian churches are like hospitals. I go there when I need some help. Okay. They're great. Okay. And they pray for me. They pray for my friends. Yeah. And... Christian prayers, in my experience, always worked. Okay. Of course, I didn't get elected last year, but that's fine. Anyways. So, uh, what else? FDR, Frank, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Okay. From this book, I learned that he was elected four times to be president of the United States, okay? He died from some illness, okay, in his fourth term, but he was ele the only American president who was elected four times. I guess it was legal back then, okay? No? Didn't know. I thought he was elected three times, okay? Anyways. So, FDR, uh, he appointed uh, Joe Kennedy Sr. to be head of the Securities Exchange Commission, SEC, okay, that he created to his term, FDR, okay, after Great Depression of uh, 1929, okay. Later on, Joe Kennedy Sr., he wanted to be an ambassador the ambassador of America in London, England. And FDR gave it to him. Okay. Let me grab some tongues. I'm drinking now. And <clears throat> so Kennedy's family went to London because JFK's father, Joe Kennedy Sr., was an ambassador representing America in London, England during World War II. Okay. 
So Joe Kennedy Sr., he tried to meet without Department of State's permission. He tried, tried to arrange a meeting between he himself and Hitler to talk him out of war, basically, okay? And, but that meeting never happened, okay? And Department of State, that he worked, used to work for as an ambassador, uh, they got angry and they fired uh, Joe Kennedy Sr. as an ambassador, okay? So they came back to America, okay? Interesting history, right? Yeah. It was Page Turner, totally. I, I'm still reading it, okay, so. Wow. So reading a paper-bound books is different from just reading out of a cell phone, Wikipedia. It's different. Okay, so yeah, I was reading those, that book I, in my on my bed, just lying down after turning on the light. Right? Yeah, that was fun. What else? Yesterday, okay. So after the episode, I went to sleep, and then I woke up like nine o'clock p.m. something like that. Then I was bored, I brushed my teeth, and then went out to shop, supermarket, and bought this book. And b before that, I went to a park in the middle of the city, okay? Then I ran there, and it was slightly raining. When it rains, do I run? Yeah, with my umbrella on, okay? It's kind of like municipal park, city park, in the middle of the city. So I was running with my umbrella on, okay. And then there's this teenager. I'm not sure if yes, there was a male or female. Probably a teenager, kind of prepubescent, like a, maybe middle schooler, maybe 13, 14 years old. My guess that is that it was a male, okay? And this kind of thing happened before. I'm not sure if the same guy or different guys. The, it could be the same kid, okay? About 13, 12 years old, who hollered at me, run for us to run, okay? So he, basically that kid was making fun of me, being running, and basically calling me Forrest Gump. <laughs> did, I, did I pay attention to that? No, I just kept on running. So this kid was a bunch of the other kids, okay? Not sure if it was the same kid, because that happened before, about a year ago, okay? I was, that time it was i think it was uh fall autumn maybe it was last year okay just running and a kid with a bunch of other kids uh hollering at me run forest run like forest gump basically that kid was making fun of me running in the park okay how embarrassing being made fun of by a teenager child Okay, very humiliating, okay, but uh, whatever. I just kept on running, okay. Yeah, I guess kind of the child or two kids, I don't know if they are same kid or not, okay, because I did not look, okay. Uh, it, I guess it's kind of suffering from some kind of mental illness, okay. Because it's crazy to call, make fun of a random stranger like that, okay. Maybe it's that child is some kind of bully, like bully in middle school, and some problem child from a troubled family, maybe suffering from some kind of domestic violence or some 
Yeah, bullies, school bullies, they are like that, okay? School, high school, middle school bullies. Look at me, I'm 42 years old, adult, still being bullied by some middle school kid, teenager. <laughs> oh boy, how embarrassing. So middle school bullies, they are bullies because uh, they have been bullied in their family, most likely by their own parents. Okay, like domestic abuse, domestic violence. Okay, probably they're victims of those abuse and bullism themselves, most likely by their own parents. Okay, so I I, I have that story. All right. So how would you define an evil? Okay, we take five spray. Okay, if you want to think about it. Okay, so this area of humanology okay we are making transition from kennedy story to humanology what how do we define on evil okay right, we'll take five minutes please ah okay. uh, just dumb kids right i pray for them okay so that they be disciplined and corrected that's what i can do prayer all right Okay, we take five minutes, please. So, uh, one simple, easy way to define what evil is, is this, okay? Uh, well, I give you a minute if you need more time. 
if you want to think about it, how would you define what evil is? How would you define what good is? Good versus evil. Okay. Yeah, let me grab some whiskey cup. Yeah. So, yesterday, I after the episode, I watched this 24 TV show, and season one, Jack Bauer is explaining to CTU agent, counter-terrorist unit, counter-terrorism unit, uh, CTU agent Jack Bauer, he was lecturing to his employee, Nina Myers, so that, uh, yeah, those people, they are not bad people, no, they're just same kind of people like you and me, but they compromised once. Okay, yeah, that, that's, that was a very cool line in season one, 24 TV show. And, um, <laughs> okay. Huge fan, yeah, it's a very good show, TV show. Senator Palmer, African American gentleman, uh, running for president, okay. California president, the primary, Democratic Party, most likely, okay. Anyway, and Kennedy was Democrat, okay, so. Anyways. Uh, Andy Jackson was a Democrat, okay. He created his Democratic Party, okay. Andrew Jackson, okay. Back then, Democratic Party was very different from today's Democratic Party, okay. Back then, Democratic Party was more racist than the Republican Party. Mm -hmm. uh, but during the LBJ, Linda B. Johnson, uh, yeah, sudden switch, some people say sudden strategy, yeah, that's when it all changed, okay? Democratic Party become less racist and Republican Party became a little bit more racist, okay? After that, 1970s, okay? Civil Rights Act, okay? Maybe 1960s, huh? 1964, okay, okay. Something like that. Yeah. So, uh, how do you define evil, all right? The simplest way to define evil is this, okay? Uh, well, in humanology, we have pain and pleasure, plus and minus, minus and plus, okay? Humanology is called dualism, okay? Pain and pleasure, there's human emotion. Not just emotion, it's, it's body, physical pain and physical happiness, physical pain and pleasure, and mental pain and pleasure, mental pain and pleasure, okay? Mental pain, it could be sorrow, sadness, humiliation, frustration, embarrassment. Okay, those are mental pains, emotional pains. Emotional pleasure, yeah, joy, pride, jubilation, happiness. Okay? Mental pain, unhappiness, okay. Physical pain or physical pleasure, physical pleasure, it could be for adults, intercourse, reproductive activity, that Trump, Clinton, Kennedy indulged, indulged in, okay. Um, just making some observation here. Let me flush out my eye, it's, it's something that Physical pleasure, uh, yeah, intercourse, SEX, that reproductive activity for males. For females, uh, it, it's not as, as simple as males. Females enjoy intercourse when the guy has all the money, power, and fame, okay? Uh, Miss uh, Mala Marple, the, Mr. Trump's ex-wife, 
Uh, she famous to say, yeah, best SCX ever, right? Uh, well, Mr. Trump, uh, he was not that athletic. He got pot belly, belly fat. He doesn't have that much muscle. He's not the most handsome guy, okay? And, uh, but he got money, power, fame. So that's when a female enjoys intercourse. It's just biological evolutionary response. Okay, the security, sense of security, okay. Then, yeah, females enjoy. Otherwise, not really. So for females, intercourse, that's not exactly physical kind of pleasure. It's more mental than physical. It's about money, power, fame, secure sense of security. That's when female enjoys the intercourse. Okay, that much I know about females. Okay. For males, we enjoy intercourse when females are healthy, good looking, okay, and young. Okay. It's about, it's all about evolution biology. It's about reproductive success chance. For females, their children will be more likely to survive if the father of this child have money, power, and fame, security. It's biological evolutionary response. For males, uh, they are attracted to females who are young and healthy. Again, biological evolutionary response. Because if females are young and healthy, more likely to have healthy children. Hmm? It's just biology, evolution, okay. okay? We are not being judgmental here, we are analyzing scientifically, okay? The law of attraction is biology, that's it. There's nothing else, okay? Law of attraction, yeah, we just solved the problem, right? Scientifically, logically. It's evolution and logic, that's all it is, okay? Now, I I don't know physical pleasure and when we go to bathroom and discharge our liquid or feces, defecation, or we go to restroom and we discharge the gas too. The what the is it fastulation or something? I forgot. Whatever, okay, yeah, passing the gas, okay, passing the air, water, wind, in the bathroom, okay, so yeah, we feel good about that. And another biological pleasure, when it's cold outside, we come home or into a building, it's warm, there's biological pleasure, or when it's hot outside in the summer, we come to a building, nicely air conditioned, so our body cools down. Physical pleasure. Another physical pleasure, eating. When we are hungry, it's, it's minor processing, okay? We are hungry, then we eat good food. Physical pleasure. It's all about achieving the homeostasis. When we are hungry, yeah, we eat something. Homeostasis. Energy level. When we are overworked, after that, we come home, we rest. We feel physical pleasure, homeostasis, huh? rest, restoration. Yeah, so physical pleasure is about, all about achieving homeostasis. And when it comes to reproduction, uh, that's not homeostasis, but that's uh, more of, yeah, it kind of is homeostasis too, okay. It's like... Uh, release of accumulation of this sexual energy libido okay to get it out to even out because there's too much of that accumulated so discharge that at least for males yeah. so yeah physical pleasure is all about homeostasis okay how about mental pleasure ah uh, it's kind of homeostasis though, okay Metaphysical pleasure or emotional pleasure, right? Yeah. Let's say charity. Okay. We help out people 
And we feel good, good about it. Come rewarding experience after we did some voluntary work, volunteerism. We help out the poor, some sense of pride, meritorious act, some sense of rewarding experience. Okay. Let's say we have a lot of money and time. Let's give it some of our money and time, energy to the people who have negative money and time. Negative money. Yeah. Even it out. Kind of almost homeostatic, right? Okay. Also, <clears throat> knowledge, learning. Learning experience <coughs> is one of those metaphysical pleasure, okay? <clears throat> yeah. The lack of knowledge, okay? Knowledge is like food. Right? We learn something and then we teach something. Input and output. Homeostasis. What is homeostasis? It's maintenance of this constant level of things. Input, we learn something, and output, we teach something constantly. We learn something new, teach something new, okay? Uh, those are the some of the homeostasis metaphysical pleasure. We can understand it that way, okay? We are building some foundation, groundwork, to define what is good and what is evil. Okay? We'll take five minutes break, please, okay? Welcome to humanology. Anything goes, okay? So... We also make some teleological argument to okay, God. We'll talk about God, Creator. I'll leave it with this question, okay? Why did God create evil? Can good exist without evil? Or is it relative? Huh? Can there be goodness without there being evilness or are they can they exist only when the other exists because they are relative okay. yeah relativism plays a big part in humanology but it's not einsteinian relativism because we disproved it we're talking about plain vanilla galilei and newtonian relativism Okay, so that's what we're talking about, okay. Einstein relativism, yeah, we disproved them. Special and both special and general, okay. So when we talk about relativism, it's plain by like Galilean Newtonian classical mechanics in physics. Okay? Alright. Let's take five minutes, please.
So, uh, let's take a break from humanology, okay? Uh, Vice President Kamala Harris, way back when, when she was maybe Senator Harris or Attorney General Harris, I don't know, but in some TV interview, she said something like, young people are so stupid. That's what she said. I'm just quoting her, okay? I was like, I was offended, okay? But that, that's not my observation, my experience, okay? Last year, when I was running for Alaska State Senate, okay, I had a chance to interact with young people, teenagers, okay, yeah, in the same park that I ran yesterday. They, because they hang out there, okay? Yeah, I'll push them, give them some waters as part of campaign of effort last year. Probably July or June that time, uh, handing out my campaign cards. They are, too young to vote, okay, but they can give, pass my campaign cards to their parents, grandparents, okay, so no problem. So I, I did interact with them, and they're smart people, okay, young people, oh, they're, they're smart. They're very smart, okay. Every now and then, just like when we see adults, yeah, some youngsters are dumb, like the kid who follows at me. Run for a throne, that's not smart at all, okay? And it was, it could have been the same kid last year who followed the same thing, run for a throne, or it could be two different kids, I don't know. But it's not that child's fault though, okay? He or she, most likely a guy, okay, some prepubescent middle schooler, maybe 12, 13 years old child, okay. He did not choose his parents. Obviously, his parents did not educate him very well at all, okay. He did not choose his parents. He did not choose this kind of like domestic violence kind of uh, t troubled family, household. He did not choose that fate. He was just born in there, okay. How about his parents? They didn't choose to be abusive. They didn't choose to be domestically violent. I'm just taking a guess here, okay? But obviously they abuse their child. That's why this child is abusive. Okay, this child is abusive. Where did he learn that abuse? Abusive behavior? Most likely from his parents, okay? So that's why he's abusive in school or in a park. Okay, calling a random stranger like me, or run or jogger, run Forrest Run, basically calling me a fool, idiot, okay, Forrest Gump, right? Yeah, he learned that obviously behavior most likely from his parents, okay? So then are his parents to blame? I don't think so. In human energy, uh, we don't blame people, we don't judge people. Why? We see it as ideological infection, abuseism, okay? God created Satan, and God created people, and God chose some people to be infected, to be possessed by the devil. It's all God's de divine design. So why did, why did God create evil then? For higher purpose, I guess. For example, we would not be talking about the definition of evil unless it, this unknowing thing happened last, last night. This stupid kid calling me Ron Forrest Ron, okay? 
because that happened, we are talking about what evil is. Okay, so it's it is God's divine design. Yeah, it hurt my feelings. I was annoyed. Look at me, 42 years old, adult, United States candidate, <laughs> United States Senate candidate from Alaska, still being bullied by some middle school or teenage dumb, stupid teenage kid, okay. Whew. How embarrassing. <laughs> Talk about embarrassment, right? When I was in middle school, I was bullied for a year, okay. When I was seventh, seventh grade, like 12, 13 years old, probably at the child's age, okay. And now look at me. So I was like 30, 12, I guess. So 30 years later, still being bullied by 12 year old child, okay. <sighs> Horrible, right? Yeah. Haha. <laughs> Anyways, so, but it's good that it happened yesterday, last night. Why? Because we are talk we are making some uh, audition to this humanological discussion. Humanology is mostly done, okay? We're just having some appendix, okay? Adding some stuff. So, how do you define an evil? It's about time, okay? Yeah, it's about evil act is an act that causes physical or mental pain good act is an act that causes physical or uh, mental pleasure right that's easy way to define good and evil it's all about pain and pleasure causation act huh? Yeah. So relativity of happiness and unhappiness. It, we talk about homeostasis, okay? Body temperature, okay? In the winter, I mean, our body temperature better be around ninety-seven Fahrenheit, right? If it's higher than that, we feel hot. We feel the pain in the summer outside. Because our body temperature rises from the homeostatic level of 97.1 Fahrenheit, it deviates upward from the homeostatic level. We get hot. We feel the pain. Now, let's say from outside, hot summer, we come back home with cool air conditioner and shade. The, our body temperature falls down to 97.1. Cool, we cool down. We feel pleasure. Okay? Pain is all about deviation from homeostasis. Pleasure is all about returning back to the homeostatic level. That's pleasure. Okay? No? I forgot what it was, but some European philosophy emphasized about change. Okay. Uh, I read, read into it in Wikipedia some, at some point, but I, I forgot what the name of that philosophy branch is. Okay. Was it vitalism? It's been a while. Some kind of metaphysical branch in Western philosophy, European, I think, uh, they heavily emphasize in changes. Okay. Did I quote that? I might have in my past papers, okay. I'm not sure. But I, I did run into it, okay. <sighs> So, when it comes to coitus, like reproductive activity, 
SEX, okay, intercourse. Uh, it's like this, okay, yeah, I mean, no adult human being want to do it all the time, okay. It's about homeostasis. Yeah, the accumulation of libido, sexual energy, and then do it, release it. Then wait for a while. Then do it, okay? It's like work and rest, work, rest, okay? Yeah, it's the same concept, okay? If we rest too much, it causes pain, boredom. That's what I suffered last night, okay? That's why I went out to go to supermarket and stuff. Just oversleeping during Saturday evening, afternoon, okay? It becomes huge boredom, huge pain, okay? So yeah, go outside. Because my body has already restored from fatigue, okay? By the way, I, I felt some second COVID-19 shot headache a little bit. It's a different kind of headache, okay? Right. But it's gone now. Something minor, right? Yeah. And I drove to the gym last night after shopping from Walmart, uh, the another supermarket. Then I realized, you know, I'm my right muscle, right shoulder muscle is still healing from the COVID-19 second shot. So yeah, yeah, it's not a good idea. So I went to a park and uh, yeah, did some running there. So back to the discussion of good and evil, okay? So if evil is something that causes mental or physical pain, Okay, uh, but so Rose Kennedy, Mrs. Rose Kennedy, wife of Mr. Joseph Patrick Kennedy, senior, JFK's mother, okay, she was strict doctrinaire, okay, she was about disciplining her children, so she did spank her children when they misbehaved, okay? Is that evil? The children may think so. Oh, my parents, they are so evil because they are causing me all this pain. But on a great grand scheme of things, uh, the discipline, punishment, yeah, that it does cause pain. Sometimes mental, sometimes physical. But it's necessary evil. Okay? Children, they are more animalistic, okay? Unless they are disciplined and punished, corrected when they err, when they do wrong, okay? Otherwise, they will go down the tube. They will become criminals. Unless they are corrected, okay? So I hope and pray that child who hollered at me, run for us, run. And it could be the same child last year who hollered at me in the same park, okay? Or it could be two different child, ch ch children, okay? I don't know, okay? I hope and pray their parents uh, discipline and correct their children. Otherwise, they may become criminals, okay? Criminals, they start from something very small. And unless corrected, they get addicted to crimes and something, some harms, doing wrongs. It gets snowballing, okay? It gets bigger and bigger, okay? So I hope and pray those children's parents somehow learn how to discipline their and correct their children. It's different from domestic abuse, domestic violence. That's not good education, okay? Discipline is this, okay, when your child does something wrong, you correct them. Domestic violence, domestic abuse is just being abusive to this child no matter what. There's a big difference, okay. Discipline, home education of children, correction, it's all about ethics and morality of righteousness, of rightness. It's about correcting when the child does something wrong. And it's also about strengthening your child. 
it's not it has it's vastly different from domestic violence domestic abuse domestic violence domestic abuse is just being abusive to the child no matter what okay so obviously this child has very bad morality bad ethics i was just running jogging in the park it's a good thing that i did to me running is a matter of death and life i run in order to survive it's a, to me running is life and death choice okay i run in order to survive physically and it's a good thing okay but i'm a minority in that park not many people run okay what do they do mostly uh, they bring their dogs out and dogs they poo they don't even pick them up that's very typical of american parks they bring out the dogs they walk the dogs they let the dogs run right and dogs poo and they don't pick it up now, that's very typical of american parks city parks okay so i don't think i will go to go to that park again okay i don't think i'll run in that park again okay because i i'm busy okay i don't have time to deal with these stupid kids i mean 99 percent of children in that park are nice they're smart okay but one percent of children they're very dumb okay and then uh I, they hold around me like run for a run. i don't have time for that okay yeah i go to another park there are many parks in this town okay they're like city park in the middle of the city okay yeah maybe it's it's not a good idea to run there because there are a lot of people there okay and they're walking i'm running maybe uh, it's not a comfortable situation for either of us okay but there are other parks more remote parks with a lot more trees outside the city downtown yeah i think I just go to other parts, some far away place. It's better for me too because there are more trees in parks, bigger parks outside of downtown city. Okay, cleaner air because there are more trees, less cars. This is probably better for me as well to run to in those outskirts parks, bigger, larger, and more trees. Okay, so okay, points taken. Okay. Yeah. Let's take five minutes, please. Okay. Yeah. We'll take five minutes, break. Yeah. Okay. Uh.
Okay. <laughs> so last year, when I was running for Alaska State Senate, right, uh, some kind of generous voters that I interacted with, uh, they saw me, they are towners, my neighbors, okay, towners. So they saw me running because I, I run, I, I'm a jogger runner, okay, physically, I, I run also, run as a synonym, it also means like election. Yeah, I was running for Alaska State Senate, okay. So they kind of talked about that, okay. Are you going to run, run again? Yeah. I'm physically running, also politically running too, time and again, okay. So some obvious joke here, okay, yeah, run, forest run, you are an idiot, you are imbecile, you are stupid, and you are dumb, you are imbecile, idiot. Yeah, run, forest run, yeah, you never win. Election after election, okay, just keep running like an idiot. That's me, okay, so <laughs> points well taken, okay. No did. I, I mean, my voters, my neighbors, they didn't say that, I'm just adding my own stuff here, okay. Because I'm a writer, okay. Nobody said that to me, okay. I'm just to engaging in some creative writing here, okay. That's too bright right there, up there, back there. So, two months from now, July 4th, okay, I wear that campaign sign on my back, uh, then it occurred to me, what if Mrs. Commissioner's campaign people are right behind me, but then as I march down, because I'm wearing that campaign sign behind my back, they'll be watching this all this time, and it, it may be very bothersome and annoying to them, okay? Uh, that occurred to my mind, okay? Well, people behind me, the March, July 4th March parade, People behind me, even if they are not Mrs. Commissioner's people, or, but they may still get annoyed because I'm wearing this campaign sign behind my back, like a turtle, turtle boy, okay? So, okay, what's the solution then? Uh, maybe I will walk sideways, like that, or walk backward so that people on the side, audience, can see my campaign sign. Yeah, probably I'll do that, okay? Run, walk forward, march forward, backward, march left, march right. Yeah, I can do that, okay? Because when I run, yeah, I, sometimes I run backward, sideways, left and right, okay? Yeah. I'll do that, okay? Yeah, so that's the solution. Good. Uh, what else? Mary's Wisconsin story, okay. I emailed this story to my friends, okay, and I think they liked it, okay, so. When I was at uh, Mary's Wisconsin, okay, majoring in computer science, uh, I took liberty to take some entertainment business classes. Uh, screenplay, kind of like Victorian era, theatrical writing, okay? It's more of a history, okay? Yeah. Theatrical writing class, okay? Literature. Theatrical literature, okay? And act, introduction to acting, okay? And then introduction to video production, okay? Filmmaking, okay? Video, okay? <laughs> It was not film, but video, camera, okay. And then backstage craft, okay. Backstage craft class, Madison, Wisconsin, uh, it was two credit class and I got a B. Why? I guess our instructor did not like my attitude, okay. I was kind of lazy a little bit. Maybe I fell asleep, I don't know. I got a B, okay. I don't know why. I guess the instructor did not like me, okay. I, 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 I worked pretty hard in that class, okay. But I cracked some jokes, okay. I guess he didn't like my jokes, okay. So, backstage stagecraft, two credits. 
It was part of actual live theatrical production. Okay. It was a romantic comedy, theatrical production, Madison Wisconsin University. Okay. And yeah, there were audience, towners, Madison Wisconsin. Okay. Yeah. My job. So it was a class, two credit class in department of theater or whatever. Okay. Uh, entertainment business class, live theater, actors, actresses. I actually auditioned to be an actor in the theatrical production, but they did not select me. They select others, mostly uh, graduate students in the department, the master's degree in department of theater. Okay. <laughs> Because it is their graduate students in the same department who produce this live theatrical production, okay. So. But they also uh, cast, uh, selected in the audition some other outside the department people, some of them undergrads. I was one of them who auditioned, but they did not give me any role, okay. But at the same time, because I was taking this class, backstage craft, I did participate in that live theatrical production that ran about for two, three weeks as a sound engineer, as a uh, soundboard operator. Okay. There were a lot of speakers in the theater. It's a university theater. Okay. And yeah, yeah, they sell tickets, box office, okay, towners, local, residents, okay. Ah, uh, yeah, people did come, buy tickets and came, with their audience, okay. So I was a soundboard operator. There were a lot of speakers, microphones, and me switching from this speaker, next speaker, music, background music, and volume, okay, that was me, that was my job. And I, I did very well, okay. No mistakes. But his truck talk gentleman, he still gave me a B, okay. I guess he did not like my attitude because I'm like I was like uh, you know what, I yeah, it's backstage craft. Yeah, I, I understand I have to learn it to be an entertainer in Hollywood one day. Uh but I'm an actor kind of guy, okay, so that was my attitude, okay. So. But uh, the director of that theatrical production, I do not remember the name of the title of that theatrical play, uh, but the director was a lady. She was a professor there, Department of Theater, okay, Madison, Wisconsin University. And she, uh, she's Caucasian, I think she's brunette, eyeglasses. And uh, uh, her body type uh, heavier than average. Okay, yeah. Very smart lady, very nice lady. And then uh, uh, during the breaks, yeah, we smoke cigarettes together. I did talk to her, and she was extremely talented director. Okay, because that theatrical production, it was very well done. Very well directed and casting was very well done too. Okay. She did not select me to be an actor in her show, but still, as a sound operator, I watched them rehearse. I because I worked as a sound operator when they rehearse in the actual live theatrical production. I was there time and again. I watched that show again and again, and I was never bo once bored. It was that good. It was that good, okay. She was very talented director, okay. Madison Wisconsin. Professor, okay. Casting was great, story was great, and acting, directing, it was just perfect. Although I was not selected uh, as an actor, I did not resent it, okay. It was very good production, okay. Yeah, I really enjoyed that show. When they rehearse or live production, Huge fan, oh yeah.
And there's this one lady, graduate student in the Department of Theater, master's degree, okay? Graduate student. There are a couple of ladies, okay? They're, mostly they're Caucasians, okay? So, and one of the ladies, okay, later on when I was taking this uh, video production class, uh, it was like four credit class, I think. We are directors of short films, okay? So I posted some in bulletin boards, okay? Yeah, hey, I'm looking for a couple of actresses uh, to play. Yeah, I'm a student in the video production class, and as a class project, short film, like 10 to 12 minutes long, and I need about two actresses to play a role, okay? And later on, I learned that uh, one of the actresses, the graduate students in the department of theater, who are actresses in that theatrical play production where I was a, I was a sound, soundboard operator, she did apply. Okay, and I did, we had some small audition, interview, and uh, yeah, I hired her. The pay, yeah, DVD of this finished short film. I, I did give it to her, okay. But that, that's the deal, typically, okay. For startup actors, actresses, uh, we cannot pay them money because we are struggling directors. And back then I was also a student, okay. I was not even film major, not even minor, okay. I just took this video production class. And that short film I made, most likely it's still in the archive of Madison Wisconsin University because we have to submit for the archival purpose, okay. Do I have a copy of that? No. It was lost when I was moving around from state to state, okay. But yeah, I did burn DVD and gave it to her, okay. Another copy to Department of Theater at Management Wisconsin University, okay. It was success. Why? My classmates, my instructors, really, really were entertained. What's that short film about? Uh, if you want to, yeah, please take a guess, okay? Hint? I was a single guy back then. Just like I'm now. But I was 10 years younger. Okay? So, that's the hint, okay? If you want to take a guess what the short film is about. It was great success because my classmates, how many of them? About 10 of them. And my instructors, about two of them, they were very entertained, okay? But there was that. It was not submitted to any film festivals or anything, but we enjoyed it, okay? We'll take five minutes, please, okay? Good old days, right? Yeah. 20 years ago.
Uh, let me grab a cell phone. <laughs> this is a fun little short film, like 10, 12 minutes long. Why did I not submit to film festival? Well, it's copyright reason, because I used this soundtrack, Christina Aguilera's song, What A Girl Wants. Okay, so that's the title of this short film, What A Girl Wants. Because it was kind of mug interview, actually, actually real interview too. So I took the camera, video camera. It was not film based, it's a video, uh, digital video, okay. Uh, it's a class project, okay. And, uh, I did it by myself, but I enlisted some, my classmates help. I, I hired them, hire some of them as an actor in my short film okay and i my classmates they also invited me to play on acting role and i did that too okay so mutually beneficial collaboration just a little bit okay as an actor okay yeah let me sing you this song okay Kristen Aguilera. I played this song in that movie, that's why I could not submit to film festivals, that's copyright violation. But it's for educational purpose, class project, no problem, right? But I cannot submit to film festivals because I don't own no copyright, okay? Otherwise, I have to pay those recording companies, okay? What a girl wants, what a girl needs. Ooh, I wanna thank you for giving me time to breathe like a rock you wait so patiently. We got it together. I've uh, figured out. Don't let me lose or never touch. Was in my heart, I'll be shout out. All the ends, making plans. And it's lucky for me, you understand what a girl wants, what a girl Make sure happy that you free. I'm thanking you for knowing exactly. Yeah, whatever, okay. So I play that music in the background uh and at the same time i was singing alone okay with a heavy korean accent okay my classmates they really liked it it was hilarious okay because my english was not good okay so i'm singing along with just a little bit very feminine song as a male with a heavy korean accent they were hilarious okay so my classmates my instructors they really liked that okay it was hilarious, okay. And then I would interview people not scripted at all, okay. On the street, yeah, state street, Madison, Wisconsin, state street, beautiful state, street. That goes all the way from uh, Memorial Library Mall, with water fountain, all the way up the hill to Capitol of Wisconsin, Capitol building, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's a beautiful street. A lot of restaurants, recording stores, okay. Great street street. Some video stores too, okay. So I've, there was where this film was filmed, okay. And there are benches along the side, the sidewalk, some benches to, for people to sit down. And I did interview real people. It's not scripted that part okay so i was asking question to this gentleman sitting on a bench okay i was like hey mister i have a question for you oh yeah what is it i don't know what women want that's why i'm single what do women want and that gentleman said well the young man the thing is you should not treat women as some kind of commodity okay have some respect treat them as human beings not as sexual toys or commodity okay do not regard women as objects uh treat them as human beings okay then you get a girlfriend okay oh thank you for your wisdom and advice thank you sir okay yeah it was that and next thing yeah i hired an actress okay and it was scripted 
So what was that? Well, it was like, it was acting part, scripted, okay? I, I wrote the script, of course, and I gave it to her, and she memorized the lines, acting, okay? So she was just walking down the state, state, state street, and I, I, I was walking down the street, the camera on the tripod, okay? And action, okay? So, and I asked her a question. Hey, lady, uh, please, uh, can I ask you a question? And she said, oh, yeah. Uh, well, let's see the voice, okay? Oh, hello, lady. Good afternoon, lady. Uh, miss, uh, can I ask you a question? Uh, and she was like, scripted, okay? I wrote a script, okay? She, she memorized a script, okay? She, she's a great actress, okay? I hope and pr pray that she become great actress if that's, she, that's what she wants. I hope and pray she succeeds in entertainment business if that's what she wants, okay? Because she, she was in that play, theatrical production, romantic comedy, okay? Great actress, okay? I was honored that she played as an actress in my short film, okay? That's great honor, okay? Yeah, I'm very grateful, okay? So, and, so, and then, okay, so I asked question and, In my script screenplay that I wrote, and she acted very well, and she was supposed to slap me on the face. Okay, and she did it very well. <laughs> so there was the scene. Okay, so I said something kind of off the wall. Mm, okay, so me as a guy same saying something uh, not very nice, uh, not very savvy about females. So in this script is a is not romantic comedy; it's just comedy. Okay, so uh, the parenthesis, the instruction to the actress is that she slaps me my chick, okay, and she did. Okay, so that was that, then, then. We had a very good laugh all together, okay. Watching this movie, okay, so. And then she left. I mean, in, in this short film, okay, so. Yeah, that was cool. We all like this movie, okay? Actresses here and also participants and my classmates, instructors, okay? It was a comedy movie, okay? I don't have a copy with me, uh, but University of Wisconsin Medicine, they have it, I think, in the archive, okay? If I ever become famous, I pay a visit to Wisconsin and then, um, go to the Department of Theatre and ask for that copy and make a copy. Of course, pay them some money and have a copy of my own, digital copy, okay? And put it on YouTube, okay? If I make enough money in the future to travel to Madison, Wisconsin, okay? It's in my list of things to do, okay, so. It's a very good short film, all right, so. It's the very first movie I ever made in my life, all right, so. If I ever become president of the United States, okay, I will only do one term, four years, okay? Because that's more than enough for me to save the world. Because I won't be do saving the world all by myself, it'll be everybody. I just coordinate the effort, lead the effort of salvation business, okay? After that, what do I do? I might go to 
in the entertainment business. Not in Hollywood, Los Angeles, California, but in Alaska. Mm -hmm. Or I may become a professor somewhere. Okay. Preferably Alaska, because I love Alaska, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just hit five minutes break, please, okay? Yeah. Then we'll talk some more about this short film, okay? Because there was not the end. Me being slapped, scripted, okay? Uh, there's some more later on in this movie, okay? So, some very good inputs from my colleagues in the video production class, okay? Smart people, okay, so. And they gave me some ideas. Okay, yeah, yeah. Smart people. My classmates, okay. They gave me some ideas, okay. Yeah. And I tell you, okay? Yeah. You take five minutes, please. <laughs> okay, so memory day, memory time, story time, right? So, if you're curious about it, okay, I tell you, okay. So, what was that line that I, in this 
screenplay in this fiction short story, okay? Why in this story fiction? What did I say to upset the lady on the street? Okay, she was just walking up the street. I was walking down the street, and then I asked her a question, and she ended up slapping my face. Okay, so what what did I say there in this storyline? Okay, I think I said something like, "Ah, oh hey, lady, uh, miss, uh, I have a question for you." Oh, okay, what is it? Uh, what would you say if I ask you that uh, you and I go to my apartment and engage in uh, some physical intimacy? Ah! Ah! So that was that, okay. So. And originally, I, because I, I gave during the interview, the audition, okay, I gave up all the script. We met in a restaurant, okay, because she applied, okay. Yeah, uh, the script said, uh, the way I wrote, my poor English, okay. Don't you dare again, okay. But she she's American, okay. <laughs> my English was second language, okay. So it, she pointed out that, yeah, it's kind of awkward. English, so she rewrote. Instead of "Don't you dare again," how about "How dare you?" So I, I agreed, and so we revised, edited this script, that one sentence. Instead of "Don't you dare again," how about "How dare you?" Okay, and she suggested that, and I accepted it. Okay, so so yeah, she slapped me, just like I wrote in the parenthesis acting instruction. And then she said, yeah, how dare you? And then she left. It, that, that was part of the act, okay? It went very well, okay, so. Funny thing, I'm a smoker, okay? Back then I used to smoke quite, a lot more than now, okay? So I would have this smoker's cough, so I have this cough suppressant candy like holes, whatever, okay. And when she slapped me, this cough candy, it fell out. It was not my tooth. <laughs> I guess some of my classmates thought it was my tooth falling out. No, it was not. It was cough suppressant candy, holes, okay. So I thought candy, that's what fell out when she slapped me, okay. So. It was not, not, not my tooth, okay, so. But yeah, she, she, she's a great actress, okay, so I hope and pray she become successful as an actress, okay. Maybe in Broadway, Hollywood, I don't know, okay. If that's what she wants, okay, yeah. I was honored because she was a graduate student, okay. I was undergrad. I was not even major or minor in film, okay. I just took this class, okay. Because I was interested in film industry. Yeah, I was a computer science major, but I did not just do computer science. All right? I wanted to explore outside of computer science, okay? And Medicine Wisconsin University, they allowed me to do so. Great school, okay? Yeah, yeah so fantastic actresses, actors, okay? Yeah. Working together, right? As opposed to therapy more metrophobia is all by myself. Okay. Uh that was very difficult, okay. Just filming making of one whole entire movie all by myself. Therapy more metrophobia is not just short film, it's feature length film, hour and ten minutes, seventy minutes, okay. That was not easy. But short film interacting with other people in the cast. It was more fun, okay? Because we are social animals. Homo sapiens, okay? Okay, so next scene was this, okay? I was in the... It's scripted, okay? So on the... Back then, we're talking about 2002, something like that, okay? 20 years ago. Back then, there was this public telephone 
on the street. Quarter, you drop a quarter, wired, public telephone, okay? Yeah. Fully scripted, okay? So I was calling my buddy, okay? Hey, man. I mean, I asked you to help me filming this film in the movie, okay? Short film. But you never showed up, man. What's going on, man? <laughs> and he said, Oh, I, hey, man, I'm sorry, I forgot. Okay. Dude, yeah, I forgive you, okay? You're my best friend, okay? Then playing this background music again. Christian Aguilera, what about ones, okay? And then that my classmate, body of mine, guy friend, okay? Yeah, he saw that to me, okay? Why don't you, yeah, when, when this title credit, rolls down. Why don't you just let the camera run filming this medicine scans in State Street? And I took it. I took his advice, okay? Yeah. Just still shot, okay? Live, the cars moving around, people walking around, okay? State Street. As title credit go down, who's the actor, actresses? Wire director, okay. This class, video player, title credit, okay. Yeah, just let the film roll. There's a camera roll. Keep on. Yeah, that's a great idea, okay. And I took it. He thought, he saw the voice, okay. Yeah. I was also on one kind of guest star actor in that guy's, my classmates. Just film, okay. And that one was fun too, okay. Hmm? It was good. Yeah. Good old days, right? Yeah. How about acting class? Introduction to acting? Yeah, we have this instructor. We have video production class. Our instructors, masters, degree student. We had professor in the big lecture hall, but when it comes to laboratory, lab classes, yeah, it was master's degree student. Big lecture hall, yeah, there was full-time professor, okay. They were both females, okay. But when it comes to acting class, different semester, okay. Yeah, it was African-American gentleman, also master's degree student there, back in 2002, something like that, okay. I still keep in touch with the gentleman, African American gentleman, okay. Great actor. And he used to work in Hollywood as an actor. And I'm not going to tell you what movie, but it's a mainstream movie. Okay, he played role there. Okay. I did not know until like a year ago. Okay. But then I look, watch that movie again. And then I realized, oh, this, this, this gentleman, African American gentleman, kind of looks like my acting instructor, who was very legendary and charismatic, locally famous acting instructor. Okay, he told me good acting, African American gentleman. Okay, he was older than me. He's older than me. Okay. Later on, he became a professor in some other university in acting theatrical department. Okay, actually, associate dean. Okay. I, I'm not going to tell you what university, what movie he was in, okay, but uh, it was household name kind of movie, okay, he, he, he was in that movie, not as prima donna, like this leading actor, but not as extra or minor actor, but kind of in the middle, okay, very memorable role, right, household name, American movie uh, back in 1980s or 1990s. Okay. I did not know when I was his student that it was him. I did watch that movie before. I took the cl acting class. Like 2003, 2002, Madison, Wisconsin. But he was a very humble guy. He didn't boast about it brag about it. None of us knew, okay.
I didn't. But about last year, I rewatched that movie because I have DVD of that movies. Household name kind of movie, okay? Filmed in 1980s or 1990s, okay? And then I, I was... Just, he kind of looks like my acting instructor, so I, I looked at up that movie, Wikipedia, okay? So who was the name of that actor? It was him. Okay, so I looked him up, his name up, and then last year, then his name will show up, show up in Google because he's a professor, okay? So I emailed him. Hey, Mr. Professor, do you remember me back in 2002? I was used to that. And he replied back. He was him, okay? I was like, oh, I did not know he was, it was you in this movie. Very famous movie, household name movie, okay? When I watched that, I rewatched it and I realized it kind of looks like you. But when we were your students, you never told us you were in that movie that playing that role, very memorable role. You never told us, right? So you didn't know. But 10 years, 20 years later, like last year, okay, I, I rewatched that movie because I have a DVD copy of that. Common Household, internationally famous movie, filmed in 1980s or 1990s, okay. Then I thought it could have been you. I looked up in Wikipedia and it was you. Okay. All this time I never knew. So how are you doing, Mr. Professor? Okay. And he replied me back. Okay. He's a professor. Okay. Also, Dean. Okay. Of this College of Theater. In some university somewhere in America, okay, so yeah. I have some professor friends, okay. Some of my professor friends, my former professors or my former colleagues in Cornell, okay. Or some other schools too, okay. I have some friends who became professors. They're great, okay. Yeah. Interesting story, right? Yeah. Okay. I, I have a lot of very interesting stories, okay? Yeah. I'm sure you do too. Write a book, please. Or Google YouTube, whatever. Share your stories, okay? Yeah. That's what I do. It's not about JFK or Bill Clinton, Trump. They have interesting stories, but common people like us, we have very interesting stories of our own too, okay? We may not be elites or presidents, senators, but we have very interesting stories of our own, right? Yeah. All of us do, okay? Write or share with us in Google, YouTube or social media, okay? Yeah, tell us your stories, okay? That's what my friends recommend me to, okay? Because I told them and they liked it. Yeah, it's very intriguing stories. I'm a storyteller. I'm a writer. Okay. Yeah. More entertaining than fiction, right? It's God's story, human history, okay? Our daily lives, whatever, okay, so some experiences, episodes, right? I'm kind of drunk by now, okay, so what I'm gonna do next after this episode, I eat my food, okay, so, because last night I went to the supermarket, I bought some. Asiatic dumplings and Korean style barbecue, this frozen food, okay. Yeah, it was, it was not Walmart, it was more upscale place, so they have some more exotic stuff, like foreign stuff, like Chinese dumplings, Japanese uh, seaweed salad, okay. Japanese sushi, but 
not raw fish because I don't eat fish raw, not anymore. I used to, okay. I don't want any parasites there, okay. So, yeah, some Japanese sushi roll without any live fish, okay. And some Japanese uh, seaweed salad and stuff like that, okay. So, some Chinese this dumplings, okay, in the fridge. Korean style this rice and bowls, barbecue, or even Some pork, frozen food. Okay, yeah. What's what's Thai? Is it Vietnamese pork or? Let me go and look. We take five minutes break, please. Okay, so I tell you, please. It's kind of pork fried rice, something like that. What country? Some Asiatic country. Okay, frozen food. Okay, microwave. Okay. We take five minutes, please. Please.
So, okay. We're wrapping up real soon, okay? So, my dinner, I mean, lunch, breakfast is only 10 o'clock. Sunday morning, okay? Uh, yeah, I put this Japanese seaweed salad and fish is very sweetened, okay? And, uh, mandu, that's Korean word for dumplings, okay? And some Japanese sushi without any fish in there. I put it outside. I mean, on top of refrigerator. I did not put in the refrigerator, okay? On top of microwave, okay? For some hours, yeah, they don't go bad, okay? So, yeah, I'll eat that as a breakfast, brunch. It's only 10 o'clock, okay? Yeah, I guess it's breakfast, okay? But before that, I think I'm gonna sing and dance, all right? Play some music video, okay? Uh, I really pray for that child, troubled child, problem child, and he's uh, most likely a guy. I think he's a guy, okay? pre prepubescent kind of high-pitched voice, okay? <laughs> troubled family, parents, okay? I pray for them so that they depend, and they correct their child, teach them some good ethics, morality, okay? What I can do is pray, but come January 4th, two months from now, yeah, I'll parade, Okay, that's what I can do, okay? To show them some discipline. Maybe I will laughing stock because this strange campaign sign, okay? Not very aesthetically pleasing, but just practical, okay? Just show them some discipline, okay? Good parents are like this, okay? When their children do something wrong, they correct them. That's how my parents work. Sometimes spanking, sometimes bubble. Good employers, they discipline their employees when they do something wrong. Okay? But at the same time, my parents, good parents, even when I did not do anything wrong, they make sure I be diligent. When I was in South South Korea, as a child, as a teenager, okay, my parents would take me to hiking or fishing trip way early in the morning. Saturday, Sunday, okay? I'm gonna, like, oh, mommy, daddy, I want to sleep. No, no, son, yeah, wake up, okay? We'll go to fishing trip, okay? We're gonna catch some fish. Come on. <laughs> oh, mommy, daddy, I wanna take on it. No, no, son. We go hiking, mountain. Okay. They would make us work. Me and my siblings, okay? My siblings and me, they will make sure we are diligent, okay? So most, some of us have been blessed by high and almighty God to have these wonderful good parents, moralistic, ethical, home education, great educators, our parents, okay? But some of them, some of us did not have that benefit, okay? What do I do? I pray for them. That's what I can do. And I also running for U.S. Senate, Alaska State Senate, U.S. President, all right? Because I want to share, share wisdom and knowledge that we inherited from our ancestors. I'll do my part. Even if I never get elected, that's fine, okay? I write articles, I do this, Google YouTube, I do Saturday and I live with Honky Lee, okay? Yeah, I do what I can to save the world, to make this world a better place, okay? Education very important. Because not everybody is blessed with good parents. Okay. In humanity, everybody's innocent. It's just that God, in his infinite wisdom, created evil. Alright. Without darkness, there's no light. It's a relative, okay? Without evil, there's no good. Without pain, there's no pleasure. Without unhappiness, there's no happiness. It's so relative, okay? We can understand God's divine wisdom that way. Why he created devil, Satan, formins, diseases, crimes, okay? Hopefully there's afterlife, heaven. I don't want there to be hell, okay? 
in human this brand of humanity, everybody's innocent. It's just God, just that God created Satan, evil, devil, and God created people, and God chose some people to infect with demonic possession, satanic infection. Okay, so but people, nobody chose to be evil. It's the, just that God chose some people to be infected by demonism, madness, craziness. I mean, who called some random stranger jogging down the street, parts, run, forest, run. I mean, that's crazy. Okay? But it's not their fault. God chose them to be infected with Satanism. Bullism, okay? It's not their fault. Is it God's fault? No, it's his divine design. Because that's what happened yesterday and also a year ago by two different teenagers in Alaska, or maybe it was the same teenager, I don't know, okay? But because it happened, we are talking about definition of what evil is. Okay. In this brand of humanity, everybody's innocent, okay? So God chose some people to be possessed by Satan, devil, okay? And we pray for them, okay? And we want to solve the solution, this mess, ungodly mess that God created. It's like... Cleaning of the mess that God created. Okay, so. And that's our job. God created devil, Satan, evil, right? That's the task that God assigned us, good people, to solve, right? To save these people who are possessed by Satan's devils, evils. They are hostages, they are slaves of Satan's, okay, destructive force. We want to save people from aggressive of evil Satan. Okay, so that's the assignment that God gave to us. Okay, and we'll do our job. Um, one step at a time. Okay, so come July 4th, yeah, I wear that campaign sign. Class clown, class clown time again, okay. Wasil Alaska, Machu Valley, okay. That's where I live, okay. So when I march down the street, July 4th parade, okay. Most people, yeah, they're nice, just like any other city, Wasil Alaska, Machu Valley, Matanuska, Sosisna Valley, okay. About hour and a half north of Anchorage, Alaska, okay? Most people are nice here, okay? Just like anywhere else. But some people are kind of mean a little bit sometimes, like that child last year and yesterday. Same child, different children, I don't know. Okay? Maybe I'll be a laughing stock. Maybe people would laugh at me, including some teen troubled teenagers. Like 1% of all teenagers in Alaska, okay? Very few of them, okay? Maybe they laugh at me, or maybe they'll hollow out at me again. Oh! Here he is again! Here he goes again, okay? Forrest Gump, some idiot, imbecile. Retarded. Yeah! Run, Forrest, run, run, keep running again, okay? You never get elected. You're stupid. You're an idiot, imbecile. So stupid, okay? Yeah. Run, Forrest, run, okay? You made this campaign sign. Well, you say you, you were professionally printed in sign shop, but the harness, wooden framework, you made it yourself. And it, it looks so horrible. Not ethical. Aesthetically pleasing. Yeah, run, Forrest, run, okay? Ha ha. 
look at him waving Alaskan flag and like a toddler boy this behind his back he's wearing this campaign sign okay ha ha yeah wrong for us wrong okay stupid okay hey. they may holler at me like one percent of the audience okay I'll take it I'm Jesus young All right. let them laugh at me I'll be happy why I'm an actor comedian when people laugh at me I'll be very proud that I did my job right. As a class clown, as an entertainer, I'm entertaining people. Come self-deprecative jokes. Like Conan O'Brien, he's Irish too, Irish American. He went to Harvard as well. Just like Kennedy, okay. <laughs> Kennedy's. Whatever, I never went to Harvard. I did apply when I was in Madison, Wisconsin, PhD program in computer biology or later on law school. Also undergrad from South Korea back then, okay. I applied to Harvard three times, rejected three times, okay. Whatever, okay. But I'm still trying. As a U.S. Senate candidate, Alaska said candidate, whatever, whatever, U.S. president, okay. I'm still trying, okay. I do my part, okay. Let 1% of Alaskan population, yeah, mystery me, let them mystery me, laugh at me, laughing stock, let them horror at me, run, first run, first gump, let them regard me as an idiot, imbecile, fool, because I will look very foolish, very imbecile, very foolish, very idiotic. When I wear the campaign sign and march down the street, July 4th, watch it, Alaska, year 2021, two months from now, I will look very foolish, idiotic, imbecilic, and retarded. Because I'm running again. Oh yeah, run, forest, run, forest, gump, stupid, retarded. I'll do it again, again, and again. Let one percent of Alaskans laugh at me, holler at me, call me a fool, idiot, imbecile, retarded. Let them. But this is one percent of Alaskans. Ninety-nine percent of Alaskans, uh, they are nice, or <laughs> they are nice, or okay. They appreciate at least I try. Okay. Just like any city, any states, or any country in the world, 1% of people are infected by this devil, satanic, demonic influence. Okay, they're crazy people. Okay, they're possessed by Satan, demon, devil, but it's not their fault. As humanologist, I know it's not their fault. They did not choose that destiny. Okay, they play a role. But 99% of people in the world, including Alaska, they are very nice people. Okay. Yeah. To be elected as United States Senator, or to pass the primary level, jungle primary, open primary next year, okay. All I need to be in the primary, past the primary, and get to ticket of this general election in November next year. Primary August. Okay. In order to pass the primary, I only need 25% of Alaskan voters. Okay. I highly doubt I would get it. Okay. But I'll do my best. That's the only thing I can promise. Okay. Amidst all the jeers and cheers, I march down the street two months from now. Yeah, wearing that 
harness, campaign sign, four feet tall, six feet wide. Okay. And I I have Alaskan flag. Okay, two of them. Okay, I just carry one. Okay. By from one percent of Alaskans in this town, Wash Alaska, I be laughing stock. They will. They might horror at me. Oh, forest run, forest run, okay, run, forest run, forest gone, idiot, imbecile, imbecile, fool, idiot, stupid, okay. Let them, alright. I keep marching down. Because 99% of Alaskans here in March Valley, Washila, okay. At least they will appreciate, they may not vote for me, but they will appreciate my effort. Because they are good people. They are not possessed by Satan. They are not possessed by devil, like some one percent. Okay. Ninety-nine percent of people will at least appreciate my effort. Hundred percent of people here. In the parade, in the audience, they will be entertained. One percent of people will be hostile. They will horror at me. Oh, for run, forest run. Yeah, you idiot. You're forest gump. Okay, you keep on running. You're an idiot. You're stupid. Okay, you never get elected. Okay. Ha ha. They will one percent of people here. 99% of people, uh, they appreciate my effort, okay? But 100% of people, include that 1% people who are possessed by Satan, devil, including them, 1% people, okay? 100% of people will be entertained by me wearing this campaign sign, homemade, I mean, signage itself is professionally done, beautifully done, okay? I showed you, like, a couple of days ago, right? Yeah. 100% of people here, two months from now, in July 1st parade, they will be entertained, 100%, including that 1%, possessed by Satan's, okay? Who'd horror at me, run for us, run, okay? But they will be still be entertained. Okay. And I hope and pray that one person, people who got possessed by Satan, devil, evil, all right, I hope I can exorcise them by showing them forgiveness, Jesus Yan, exorcism. Turn the right cheek, left cheek, okay. When they horror at me, just like I did before, what will I do? Nothing. I keep running, keep Marching down, keep walking. Power of forgiveness, okay. Hopefully, it will give them some Jesus and exorcism. Yeah. What do I do? We are doing God's work. We are trying to save the world, to make people repent, to exorcise, to kick out the demons out of people. To free people from demonic possession, satanic possession, okay? Devilish infections, okay? Ideological influence, okay? That's what we are doing here, okay? All right. Thank you. Have a great weekend. Enjoy the rest of your weekend this Sunday, okay? Welcome to humanity. Anything goes. Anything good. We are trying to save the world, okay? And God willing, we will. We will. We'll get there, okay? I have no doubt. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye.